So having covered all the other rack types, I'm now going to come back to effect racks and show you a few more examples and a few more uh, use cases of how we could use effect racks. First off, uh, I'm going to show you a little tool that I've made that's uh, quite a useful one. Um, if anyone's ever used Utility uh, to automate the volume on something, you'll notice that it has quite an annoying uh, feature, uh, which if we drop one on here, let's uh, solo our drum channel and just put a Utility on the end of it. And if we were using this as a volume control, you can see that the very bottom of the uh, the range there is minus 35 dB and not minus infinity, which means you can't actually use it to fade things to and from silence, which um, I found quite annoying in the past. But there's actually a really, really simple way around it, a little bit of a hack using an audio effect track. So if we drop an empty audio effect track in here, which has got no chains at the moment, create a chain. And you can see now we've got one chain with no effects on it. But the volume control of that chain actually goes from zero up to plus six, but down to minus infinity. So we could actually use that for fades instead. So I've actually created a little rack that I use all the time uh, that I've just called gain tool. And all this is, is a rack exactly like I just showed you. Uh, with a single chain, no effects in it. But I've mapped this macro knob here so that that uh, does the chain level. So this then, with that all folded up, just works as a fade, but goes all the way down to minus infinity, so to complete silence. So I'm just showing you that first because I'm actually going to use that within some of the uh, other examples that we're going to move on to. So the first of these that I'm going to cover is parallel processing. As we covered in the early part of this tutorial, we know that all racks, when you have more than one chain, uh, the chains are processed in parallel. So I'll show you a couple of different um, ways that can be useful. So first of all, we've got this little uh, sort of Detroit sort of uh, house chord stab thing going on. A little bit dry at the moment. So we're going to add a bit of reverb and a bit of delay to this. And it'd be good throughout the track if we could fade the amount of delay and reverb on and off. So we can have it quite dry and in your face at some points, but then big and reverby and uh, sort of washed in lots of effects at other points, like build-ups and things like that. First of all, I'm going to add a reverb on here. So if we just go to our audio effects and reverb and sort of a big hall of some kind. So let's go large hall now that's nice and if you wanted to do some build-ups with it we could quite easily just automate the dry wet control But as you can hear there, the um, once we get past 50% on the dry wet control, the dry level starts getting turned down because that's what a dry wet control does. It's like a crossfade. Um, whereas if we wanted to build it, we probably wouldn't want to lose the original sound. We just want to add more and more, more and more of the reverb. So another way of doing that would be to use a send and a return. Uh, but the downside of that is that you couldn't then suddenly cut the reverb off, uh, which if you wanted to big build it where you wanted it to do something like something like this. <laughs> with the reverb cutting uh, really sharply to dry as the beat kicks back in. Uh, that'd be quite difficult to do. You could do it with sends and returns, but it's a lot easier to do it with um, an insert on the track. So what we want is to be able to add the reverb without taking away the dry signal, but also have the control over it that we get from having it uh, actually as an insert. So this is where racks come into play. So if we turn the wet dry control all the way to wet on this, right click it and group there. And then we relabel this chain to reverb. And we add another new chain and call that dry. And we're going to leave this one completely empty. And then just use this fader here to bring in the reverb. And you 
can hear that we can bring the reverb level way up, but we don't lose the dry signal because it's adding the reverb on rather than fading between the wet and the dry. We can take this idea further, so we could drop, let's say, a delay on another one here, and let's rename that one delay, and pop it there. Dry wet all the way to wet, and let's leave those initial settings on, and then we could actually bring two different uh, layers up over the top of the original sound. <laughs> So that's a good way to add those kind of spacey effects in parallel, which gives you a bit more control over them. Another twist on this idea is that you can kind of use these as um, built-in sends, almost. So what I mean by that is that at the moment, by changing this volume here, um, it's changing the output level of the effect. So if we just set that playing. <laughs> So if we take the level up and then bring it down sharply, the delay disappears as soon as we bring the level down, which for those kind of sharp cuts is really useful. But you might not always want that. So a different way of approaching that would be to leave this level at zero, open this chain up as we have, and then have an automatable level somewhere in between here. So if we go in and get our gain tool that we were just talking about before and drop that in there. So... You can see here we've got a rack within a rack, which um, as we uh, spoke about before is uh, perfectly fine and quite useful in a lot of situations. So now we can actually use this as kind of an internal send level. So if we set it playing now, leave the delay level up, and we're using this to control how much gets sent to the delay. So you can then, you'll hear that if we bring that up and drop it again, the delay will carry on afterwards because we're not turning its output down. So now that works a lot more like a send effect would do. But the advantage of having it within a rack like this is that you could have any processing on your whole track. So say you had a sidechain compressor at the end or some sort of spacey effect, you know, you had some other things happening throughout the track that you wanted to affect both the sound and the effect rather than having to duplicate it or worry about grouping and then rooting the effect back into the group. It's a much simpler way of having it self-contained. You obviously do lose the benefit uh, with sends that you have of being able to use the same effect on multiple tracks, but this definitely has its uses. We could do the same thing with the reverb here. So if we add the gain tool in there and set that to zero. You can hear that because we're controlling the level going into the reverb rather than the level coming out of it, we can pop it up for a second and we still hear all the tail of the reverb carrying on afterwards.